All right, for our next operation here, we're going to be getting into threading. And so we're going to need our threading quick change tool post. This has a 60 degree included angle here. So we'd throw that onto our quick change tool post. And then this is a neat trick to verify that this is, we want to have that in the center of our stock over here. So this is a trick that uh, you could adjust the, the um, location. Let me show that first. You can adjust the up and down location of this tool in the quick change tool post by adjusting this nut, this jam nut and whatnot over here. Now, ideally, this thread is going to be right in the center of it. So let's take a peek at this. And one thing you can do, grab a little thread gauge, this guy, and kind of lightly pinch it between the stock. So you get that point over there, and I, of course I dropped it, um, and our stock. And if it's, uh, if it's in the middle, it will be at a nice angle, perf perfectly perpendicular. So that's a bit undersided, so I'm gonna have to drop the tool, sorry, raise the tool up to try and get toward the center. And we'll try that step again. We kind of get this just lightly pinched in there. And you can see it's still at a bit of an angle. So I'm going to back it off, raise it up even higher, and just kind of repeat until that little thread gauge is, that's not bad. It looks fairly vertical up and down, which indicates that um, we should be pretty much right in the center. So I'm going to go ahead and lock that um, in place on the quick tool change post. Life is good. And then the other things we need to verify in our setup with the thread is um, the top slide, the one that's at an angle here, needs to be at 29 and a half degrees on the indicator here. And a good way to kind of check things out, make sure that we've got a decent setup, is to take our thread gauge and we're going to get a nice close up shot of this put our thread gauge in here and find one of those little slots and just kind of again get that eyeballed and pinched in there. That's exactly what we want to see is that it looks like this is perfectly situated, you know, seated inside of that little V groove at 60 degrees. That's an indication that we are in the right thread setup. So the only other things we need to worry about for our thread setup are going to be the gearbox um, and getting the pitch set up properly. This is a 5 8 inch 11 UNC, so it's 11 threads per inch. And we can go to our gearbox and verify that the gearbox is set up in here for 11 threads per inch. Looking at this, uh, there's the 11. So I want to have it, uh, first of all, this gear here should be engaged, so that's in the 11. And then it should be on letter A. So I pull this guy out. And sometimes the guy needs to rotate stuff to make this work. Come on. Slide over to the, there we go, to letter A. So A and right here in this column, now we've got it set up for 11 threads per inch. So we're nearly ready to cut these threads. The other part of getting the gearbox and threads set up properly, uh, we're no longer going to be using this to engage and disengage because um, that can actually get it to stop and anywhere along its travel. Um, to synchronize everything, we're going to put this guy into its neutral position, center position here, and we're going to use what's called a half nut on here. And this is going to also involve using the thread gauge dial, which has some numbers that we're going to see over here, we're going to have to make sure that we engage on specific numbers because we want to have to take multiple passes and every pass we take we want to make sure it starts and stops at the right location. So it's important that this is in that neutral position and when we engage we're going to be using this guy to basically bring it up when it's on a specific number and that's how we're going to engage the travel and make sure the threads are tracking in step every time. So our drawing calls out for the threads to be one and a half inches in length. 
So we're going to go ahead and uh, put a nice mark at one and a half inches away and use that as a visual sight line again. So again, we're going to have this guy come out. Um, it's hard to get a caliper in here sometimes, but there isn't a great way of doing this. So I need to mark this out at one and a half. Okay, there's one and a half on the dial. And then just going to kind of eyeball that these guys are lined up. I don't believe this is the most critical dimension. All right, so they're pretty much tip to tip there. And I'm going to go ahead and create a witness mark here. And that'll serve as our point that we're going to stop traveling. Okay, cut a nice deep groove in there for our one and a half inch, and we are ready to start cutting threads. So for thread cutting, the first thing we want to make sure is that our um, cross slide is at zero, and that the cutter, the thread cutter, is not touching our material. So this is at zero, and it's important that remains at zero for multiple parts of our operation. So this is the top slide, I'm sorry, the cross slide right here. And that needs to be set at zero. That's important for our threading before we even start. We've got our gearbox set up over there for uh, 11 threads per inch. And the only other thing that's really nice to have is a nut that we can test, make sure that we've got the right fit. So this is a 5 ace 11 nut that we're going to be using to check our fit. All right, just making sure that everything is good and tight, and we're ready to start. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is just engage. Um, you'll notice that this is uh, a distance away from the cutter. Um, let me just get the right shot here. So we've got it set up so we're not actually touching the material. I've got my groove here. We want to stop the threads, and our top slide, is, doesn't matter where this is at, the cross slide is set to zero. So here we go. Um, let's make this first pass. And we'll turn on. Oop, I should probably get the right speeds. Threading is done at really low speeds. So we do need to engage the back gear and a slower speed. So I've got the RPMs set nice and low for this. That's just fine. A real nice low RPM. And we should be able to take our first pass. So what I'm going to do is. Uh, I've got to get it started on a specific number on the thread dial. So you've got this running, and this is my engagement lever right here. And I'm going to wait for that to get to a whole number. So in this case, I'm going to start it on the number one when it comes around. I'm just going to lift up. That will engage. Then I'm going to push in our top slide until I get a mark. All right, I just drove that top slide in until I started getting a couple of lines over here. That's good news. And I'm going to repeat that same function, but this is where it gets to be a little bit of an oddity. Um, I'm going to keep the cross slide where it's at. I'm going to back up the cross slide. So I'm going to back up one revolution, go back to the beginning and then engage this back so it uh, stops at zero again, exactly at zero on this top slide marker. And since we just made one kind of partial pass, I'm going to repeat this and get another pass on here and show a little bit more detail. So here we go for the second pass, engaging when the thread dial is on a nice whole number, just kind of waiting for it to come around. On the number two, engaged. And we're cutting threads. And they should line up with the other threads that were cut. 
and I'm going to stop it once it gets into that trough. So you can see we've got one nice pass here and again it's uh, an interesting thing that I need to back up this cross slide to get it out of the way, kind of do one revolution, go back to the beginning point of the thread, then drive this back in so that top slide stops at zero once again. Perfect. And now I can make a little bit deeper cut from my cross or top slide here by about you know five, three to five thousandths on this dial. So we'll go ahead and adjust that in. It's at 70 now. I'll go to 75. The beginning of the cut you can take it a little bit heavier and as you get closer to the end of the cut we'll take smaller ones. So here comes our second pass. I'm waiting for the thread dial over here to read on a nice number. And it should track exactly in the same thread channel if you get it in the right spot. Okay, and then I stop it once it gets into that uh, trough that I had created earlier. And we keep repeating these same steps. We back off this slide, the cross slide, move it back to the starting point, go in so it stops at zero, exactly. Check, advance this maybe about uh, four thousandths this turn and then wait on the thread dial for it to come around and engage. And we just keep repeating those steps. Back up the cross slide, jog it back, move this back to zero, Engage about three to four thousandths. Wait for the thread dial to be on a nice whole number. Engage. So we keep doing this until the threads uh, look like they're fully formed. And we can also be testing it with the nut on occasion. Back up, back to the beginning, back in. Stop it at zero. Wait for advancing this guy about three to four thousandths. And again, watching the thread dial for a nice whole number. Oops, I missed it. Gotta catch him just at the right spot. And if you miss it, just disengage. There we go. And we just keep repeating those steps over and over and over again. And we're still cutting. Threads keep getting a little bit deeper. It's the same process over and over again. Stop when it gets here. Back this guy off about one turn. Run it home. Engage this cross slide to zero. And now because I'm getting a little bit deeper, I'm only taking off about two thousandths per cut. So just advance the cross, the very top slide a little bit. Missed my number. keep repeating. Now once the threads start looking like they're pointed on the tip, you might want to start test fitting the nut. So that was another cut. That looks great. It's going to kind of leave everything where it is, but I'm going to disengage the tailstock. If I unclamp 
the material from the chuck, there's very little chance that I'm going to get it back in the right position. So at this point, we can grab our 5 8 inch nut and see if we can get it started. She's still a bit tight, so she's not starting. I need to take a few more passes. But they, once I see those starting to look very pointed, then I know I'm getting close to the point where it's, it's uh, finished. I need to start tech, check, testing that test fit. So I'll take a few more passes. All right, uh, the, the points of the uh, threads are looking very sharp. So here's another test fit to verify the operation. And it's got a couple hard spots in it, but it is starting, it's going on here. So I think that is a successful thread. A little bit of cleanup with some uh, emery cloth and we're good to go. So that was a good thread cutting session on the lathe. Yeah, those feel really nice. Um, that's the next step. The last few steps are just uh, getting that bolt cut to length and um, cleaning up the head. So um, that would be done with a parting operation and we'll get to that um, parting operation in another video. But for the most part, I would say that is a completed bolt that meets the, the print. The only last things we have to do is to cut it to length. So nice work. Thanks guys.